Hi, this is Dr. Pramila Kudwa, welcoming you to yet another episode of a story for your query. We have the social group from Thakur Village once again with us. This time, we're going to be talking about the social initiatives that they have undertaken. Thank you, Sochsayani Group, for coming and spending time on this podcast and spreading the awareness on the various activities that you've been doing. Let's talk first to the ladies and the teacher amongst us. Here is a teacher who tells you stories. Sayani Kahania, a teacher by profession, a learner forever, a law graduate who has taught all kinds of students from school children to university graduates, has been an NCC cadet, taken part in music, dance performance, and enjoyed the creative art of stitching and embroidery. Madam, I have one question which is not related to the social initiatives. What yeah. is it that you cannot do? <laughs> yeah, I have skill to learn many things in life. There are so many things to learn. An eternal learner, that is what yeah. you are. Having a strong belief that one needs to have a purpose in life, she has ventured into the environmental awareness. And through her medium, Soj Sayani campaigns, she has been able to do what only a teacher can do. I believe a teacher has to be a good storyteller. And the stories help us to create an awareness. Now, the question to you, madam, what kind of stories do you tell people? What is your target uh, audience? Uh, see, our target audience are from uh, school children or from five-year-old to uh, 95, 96, any, any age group. So we have a very large age group. People of all the age groups come to our uh, sessions, story sessions. And uh, we tell stories on many topics related to life means it can be social uh, issue or it can be mythological or like that so we can tell many stories keeping in mind the audience group at that particular time you are the right person to speak on this podcast because the, my podcast is about a story for your query okay okay and i am a teacher too so that makes yeah. the storytellers here yeah <laughs> anyway, yeah. now what is the purpose of telling these stories? See, the purpose of telling the story is keeping the interest of the audience in mind. It should be, it should be interesting to a topic and telling the story should also be in an interesting way so that the people remain inquisitive about it. And at the last, uh, uh, after the story, we ask the questions also on that story. Based on the story, story mm -hmm. we ask the questions also to get back, to get their feedback back. What is they, what did they understand from the story or what message did they get from the story? That is summative evaluation. You do that also, huh? Yeah. So ask them what they've understood so yeah. you can take it forward from there. Yes. And what, uh, what did, you, did they enjoy the story or not? And what message did they get from the story? Okay, so in other words, the stories that you tell the children or the adults, whatever as the case yeah. may be, have a particular value. Yeah. Okay. Now, how is this value driven home? By asking questions? By asking questions. Because if they answer, I means if they have got the message, they will answer it in that way only. So that is the purpose of telling the story. So their interest should also remain there. And at the same time, the message should also be conveyed. Mm -hmm. I see. How? What will be the duration of these stories? Means it should be right from uh, seven, eight minutes. Or means we have uh, actually morning sessions, 45 minutes. In that session, we tell three stories. That means one person, one storyteller gets a time of about 10 minutes to tell the story and get back the answers. I see. 
so is it going to be only through the audio medium or is it going to be through ppts uh, no it is going to be means we have open session in the park where where the children and the audience sit and we we stand and tell them the story the means um, in the park only in the morning session we used to tell them i see okay thank you ma'am thank There's you so much learn about this story session <laughs> yeah Now, yeah okay we'll move on to the next person okay who okay. is dr sadna edwan okay, thank you thank you she deals with the concept color my township she's an entrepreneur a social activist who is featured once before in our, in our podcast she is a doctorate in corporate governance and she is very much active in the environmental initiatives she is the president international women's federation of commerce and industry india honorary secretary of rotary club of kamdivili and she is involved in many other social organization now my question for you madam the whole township the walls look so bright and colorful why did you think of considering a concept like this when it is not such a common thing first of all thank you so much dr pramila ma'am for uh, this lovely introduction it's really an honor to be on your podcast once again so speaking of color my township since we all know that june 5th uh, is world environment day yes and protecting it is a global challenge and a responsibility so we thought let us do a bit in whatever small way uh, you know we can to influence the residents we wanted to communicate in a very simple and effective way you know the messages to our next generation we didn't want to do anything general like the way the others do like a text painting on a wall like you know you mostly would see like a mulgi shikli pragati zhali and then there is a uh, you know a, a child standing so we didn't want to do that we wanted to do something very different we did not want any captions or any preachy messages so we did this initiative kalamai township and this was in association with uh, wac which is a which is a, we all connect it's a, also another social group and of course kansai nerolak was kind enough to sponsor the paints for this initiative okay so that would have been my next question um anyway how did you prepare or manage this entire event did you have to teach the volunteers to paint because if i were to join you will need to tell me how to hold a brush first yes so uh, we surveyed many places uh, where we could do this activity and finally we zeroed on a compound wall of a society in tarko village this wall was uh, 150 meters long oh it had 30 sections which actually looked like frames so we got the uh, the required permissions and got this wall cleaned washed filled it with cracks to make it smooth we white washed it completely and got it ready for the painting so that the paintings would look smooth and appealing to the eye so we had to do this exercise now we got about 30 artists and about 150 volunteers to assist the artists in the painting wow we identified the paintings uh one particular painting was done by one family or a group of people with the kids so there was kids involvement and there was an art school involvement so we actually worked on this for a month getting everybody uh together and getting this done i see interesting yeah. that art school also gets involved in doing something like this yes, it yes. brightens up the whole environment it adds so much of happiness to life i think absolutely yeah once this painting was completed what did you do doctor so once all the 30 sections or let me say the 30 frames were painted all the wa- walls were silently saying what we should do we should care for our environment these pictures spoke volumes uh-huh. and yeah and we had also invited as guest of honor mrs india uk gullu kuchal Uh-huh. she happily graced the event and also put some color on her hands to give an imprint of the palms on the wall of frames which we had created on one frame along with our other participants and tiny tots then on world environment day we 
open that uh, footpath for public walk, you know, like a public to walk. We decorated the footpath with lights. It was like an amazing, uh, you know, scene. It looked like a beautiful art gallery. And uh, we also invited neighboring schools to come with the students for a guided walk of our art gallery for a week as part of uh, EVS. So we guided the students to the beautiful walls. We walked with the students and conveyed environmental related messages in young minds. So I must say Kalamai Township was a wonderful way to bring the community together and create environmental awareness. So we had a wholehearted participation from tiny tots to senior citizens. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. So let's now go ahead with the next participant, Mr. Ravi Kavra. He's got a different kind of a concept here. Really let's well. vote, he says. Let's vote, he says. Yeah. He's a chemical engineer, retired from Oil and Natural Gas Corporation as a general manager. He's very much concerned with issues related to social environment and civic issues. He's, he tries his level best to get involved in whatever it is that he can do. He's worked in most of the socianic campaigns. And this time, let's vote initiative. Now, this to my mind is something new and something which is very, very uh, important. Because every time, if the voting day happens to be on a Friday, there is an exodus out of Bombay. Yeah. Long weekend, jello, jello, jello. So voting is just sidelined. So what made you think of this, sir? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first of all, thanks once again. I have been called for this uh, talk on what what. Actually, we have seen in the past that uh, voting trend, normally people uh, vote, it's only sometime 40 to 50 percent. Now it has increased to 50 to 60 percent. And uh, we have observed in the past that young, young uh, generation who is the uh, first time voters, they are very enthusiastic for voting. And then senior citizen above 60 or 58, they are uh, as a duty bound, they feel yes, it is our duty to vote, to go for voting. But middle people who are young, but they are not uh, as young as they, they are with kids. They take it as a holiday. So our target was these people in young uh, middle age who take, and surprisingly, one more point I want to emphasize here, that in the villages, those uneducated or farmers or uh, workers, they are enthusiastic for voting. It, unfortunately, it is educated people, service class people who take it as a holiday and go for holiday and avoid voting. And then, unfortunately, these are the guys who complain for the uh, government is not doing this and that. I feel personally, if I'm not voting, I don't have any right to criticize. So that thing came in my mind, uh, and we took it as a challenge, as a campaign from Soch Sayani, and targeting these people. So we, first of all, we uh, targeted about, uh, in Thakur village, different societies. Uh -huh. We took permission from chairman and secretary of the societies. After getting their uh, okay, then we found some people who are already in the Sochiani and our friendship group. We found some point, uh, person of contact in each society. And these guys collect, uh, selected some more people and made a committee in each society. Then from Sochiani, our IT cell, we made different posters on uh, filmy dialogues. Uh -huh. One vote ki kima tum kya jano Ramesh Babu. Like <laughs> that. <laughs> so yeah. there are so many, about 50 posters. If different, I can send you the uh, posters also. Then 
say i was a point of contact in my society so i take my example i took three four uh, gents and ladies in my committee we went to each flat of our society our sir 192 flats but there are societies where there are 900 flats oh so they also just like challenger society they have got 900 uh, flats so they made a big uh, uh, committee for each building so then we went to each flat and found out we made a chart in each flat how many adults are there how many people are having voting cards and how many are not having voting cards and if someone is having voting card but he is out of country or somewhere else working so we took them as a site so only those people who are uh, who can vote if they are having voting card this these i we took and then in addition those who were not having voting card we took help of bmc and election commission uh, to help them to get their voting card made oh lovely i, I uh, like to mention here uh, one of name is mr subhash dalvi he was special officer from election commission actually we had earlier met him uh, during our campaign of uh, this uh, uh, drive Uh, this garbage and wet garbage and making uh, this uh, sore off out of that so he was working for that and then he was selected elected as a special officer from election commission and he started a campaign systematizing voters education and empowerment project that is we so he helped us a lot to make uh this uh, voter cards for those who are not having i see now the uh, you make your uh, um projects and yeah. you spread you spread this awareness yeah which is the one medium that clicks with your middle age group ah uh, actually these are uh, posters then we uh, involved younger children uh-huh say from 8 years to 10 years group children we involved when we went to each flat we involved those children and told them that you tell your parents that they must go for voting yeah that was the way, very the best was, to convince parents is through the children yeah that was the best part now, we teach children now children were teaching your parents That's papa true. you you have to go for voting that's yeah. yeah even in schools we do that get the children yeah. to influence then, their parents then we made in each, we selected 25 societies in our thakur village <coughs> and each society we made a selfie point also oh once you come out after voting come here and take selfie with your finger color finger so there were so many motivation things which uh, and then we when uh, we checked in the our chart how many people are there who have got now after making new voting cards in each flat how many people are uh, eligible for voting and then we were there in after, out of that uh, election booth house and we checked how many people are coming out with the voting Uh, their f- finger color <coughs> and we checked it that how many people we sel- selected that they will be voting and actually how many people have voted one thing comes out loud and clear you are passionate yeah. about what you are doing yeah thank you <laughs> so thank you. <coughs> in our society uh, in our area thakur village uh the voting trend was 80 to 90% voting uh, wow. people voted and best society was challenger who oh, their record was more than 96% who voted excellent excellent, excellent. yeah alit kumar kashyap 
is a retired oil and gas industry engineering professional who worked in many countries. Environmental issues are a passion with him. He loves to work for the green initiatives and he has a lovely butterfly garden. And he shared the video of the butterfly from the laying of the eggs right up to the metamorphosis into a butterfly. Excellent video based on the butterfly garden in his home. Now this time from those gracious fluttering creatures, he's moved on to recycle a bicycle. I believe a bicycle would help us to reduce the carbon footprint. Now, but are the bicycle riders safe in Mumbai? What safety measures should we propose for these bike riders? Yeah, yeah. good evening, Parmela Anum, uh, first of all. Good and evening. thank you for featuring me uh, in your podcast second time. Uh, yes, as you said, absolutely is correct. I agree with you. Uh, footprint reduction, it helps. So as a responsible citizen, we all should be thinking and working to reduce our carbon footprint. You should be agree with this, right? Yes. Yeah. And this is also true that risk is involved using bicycle. But I would say, uh, and we all should understand, risk is involved everywhere, whatever you ride. But you have to balance it. So, so but if you follow road safety rules and safety use safety equipment is going to be safer. And as you as said, the carbon footprint, it is a little step towards reducing uh, carbon footprint. So cycling can be very, very safe if you use, uh, you know, follow some safety practices. There so, are, uh, as you asked me, there are uh, plenty of safety rules for riding a bicycle, but I'll emphasize uh, important ones, which I feel is very important. Uh, first thing is to adjust your cycle to fit. That bicycle should be uh, good. You can ride and when you are sitting on the riding uh, seat, your both the legs should touch the ground. This is very important safety uh, rule. And always wear appropriate helmet, that uh, approved yes. safety helmet and fasten properly. This yes. is very important because uh, because, you know, and everyone knows that a small injury on the head can be fatal. Uh, it can lead to the death. So ha wearing helmet is a very important. And another very important thing is if you uh, have a uh, cycle track in your area, use that one. Uh, nowadays, uh, if parks are renovated or new cities are developing, they have this provision. They have cycle track. And... Uh, Another thing is like uh, you should uh, obey uh, uh, safety rules and uh, road uh, traffic rules. You should always know before you uh, go for the ride bicycle. And I feel another very important thing is you should uh, ride a bicycle with buddy. That is an uh, important thing, I think. I see. How does that help? Riding a cycle with a buddy, it is always helpful because it can be, if anything happened to your bike, or to you, okay. another guy can help you. So this is the uh, buddy system is really, really great, especially uh, if you are uh, riding as a new cyclist, so you're not very much experienced, that I feel. So this much I can suggest. There are a lot many uh, safety rules are there, you know, you should not avoid in the, you should avoid riding in the nights and all. But, uh, you know, expert riders, they love riding in uh, nights with a, a lot of uh, light system, you know. And uh, that's why the, it is called uh, see and to be seen. So you should be able to see and others should be able to see you by having reflector lights and all. Yeah. True. That's very true. So, but I think bicycling is picking up in Mumbai. In spite of the fact that it is the roads may not appear safe. There are many, many youngsters who are taking up to cycling. Now, yes. the main important question here. How do you recycle a bicycle? Uh, yes, uh, right. So uh, as Sotsiani, uh, we are a catalyst. So the idea was generated. Why? Because this is very important to explain. We wanted to help actual needy people, like students or the employees, those who are joining offices far away from the office and they are less paid. They cannot afford a bicycle. 
we wanted to remove junk from the society so unused abandoned uh, and uh, discarded bicycles can be used it, will, it can be removed from that area so we can reclaim that area the space in the society that was our target and uh, we wanted to help uh, people uh, you know just to help them so they can ride a bicycle to their school and uh, for this we made a good plan we uh, we targeted the the housemaid family the housekeeping family the maintenance staff the car cleaners nearby uh, pada school the tribal schools uh, less uh, under privileged school you know adivasi area uh, we wanted to help them so what we did we uh, connected to many societies first of all and we asked them whether you can donate these cycles because we wanted their permission so uh, you should be happy to know that that many societies came forward they wanted to donate bicycles they were happy with this idea uh, the second thing uh, what we did uh, we uh, the procedure i'll tell you what we have to do it you know we we agreed uh, with the society they will donate the bicycle and then our team of sociani and mechanic we have to look for the mechanic who will go there and he will estimate for the bicycle or for the repairing cost and then we have to select beneficiaries selecting ben beneficiaries was very important for that what we did we have created a google form and we asked the societies we asked the many our people to uh, you know circulate this google form in this google form we asked journal uh, details of the uh, boys and girls name age their height because height as i told you the safety feature is that bicycle should fit to their uh, size so height was very important so we know uh, boys and girls height size that we can give the exact bicycle to them and we asked them why they need bicycle and uh, wh why they need bicycle so the answer um, i want to share some uh, uh, that forms were filled up with the answer that they like cycle they ride, want to uh, they 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 like riding bicycle they want to go to school but there was some uh, answers like uh, we want to uh, go fetch water can you believe that ah oh. yes so adivasi um, students they they wrote that we because their home is away from the water source they want to fetch water so uh, finally we got uh, many uh, you know requests uh, in the google form then we have we selected we selected um, around 40 50 uh, people uh, beneficiaries then one to one i have taken into with them and then finally we selected 32 students now selection of beneficiaries was good bicycles were donated was good but now thing was who will donate who will uh, be at the cost of repairing so it it was because each bicycle was costing around uh, 1600 to 2200 rupees per bicycle for the repairing so we look for the uh, you know uh, our uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, this uh, who can bear the uh, the cost of repairing our sponsor so in our um, thakur village we got one responsible citizen his name is uh, um, uh, mr rahul tangri he sponsored all the bicycles so we were happy but many societies also came forward to uh, sponsor the bicycle repair so, so you now we on the you tapped on the philanthropist uh, uh, side of the human beings <laughs> yes <laughs> so, that's good yeah yeah so but, we got the bicycles donors we got the beneficiaries selected we have now the sponsor also so and each and every bicycle after repairing was test ridden it was a test ride was there by our uh, our technical team i see so whether it is safe to ride or not and finally uh, we uh, on 26 january uh, we distributed 32 uh, cycles to different uh, age groups uh, men and uh, boy and girls employees and students 32 bicycle on 26 january and somebody who fetches water using the bicycle 
<laughs> yes, definitely. And uh, we, 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 after distributing the bicycle, we took uh, a small interview with them and you cannot imagine how happy they were. They were uh, very happy. And someone said, it is my first cycle uh, in my life and it will save my time to go to school and uh, blah, blah. It was, it was very, you know, heartwarming thing. I can imagine. Any yeah. initiative that gives happiness to the end user should fill yeah. us with happiness. Yes, madam. Yes. And uh, then uh, we, we are still planning. Uh, this was our first phase. In the second phase also, we'll uh, again, we'll uh, do this activity. And one more important thing I want to tell you here, uh, our target was to help the beneficiary, I mean, help the needy. But one important target was to create a system, a, a, pro, a foolproof system, so anybody can replicate our system. They don't have to think so much. So this is created in this, you know, you create Google form, we have all the data. Anybody who wants to replicate our uh, this initiative, he can do it very easily. So that's that's a good um, what shall I say? Um, the heart in the right place kind of attitude. Where you're <laughs> trying to spread. You have done all the hard work and you're spreading it with others. Thank yes, and so my, much. yeah, I think we have spent enough time. I don't want our audience to get bored listening to us. Yeah. And let's leave some amount of interest left for them to listen in for the second time. <laughs> okay. And yeah. okay. Um, we'll end our podcast here. This is the third of the three series episode. And you'll have to wait for us to come back with new initiatives. And we'll be back again soon. You could send your queries to your query, mystory at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in a fortnight and take care of yourself and stay healthy till then. Bye.